Okay, so Pi News episode 30 and coming to you from a 16 inch Sony CRT monitor. Now if I just pause it, let me know if you can hear a whistle. Uh, so I can't hear it at all, uh, but both my kids and my wife hear it. My wife's a couple of months older than me, but uh, obviously I've lost that very high frequency. So it depends on your age as to whether you've lost that high frequency. Anyway, more about this and CRTs at the end of the video. Let's get on with Pi News. So first up, we have a new product from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and this is the Pi PoE, or Power Over Ethernet Plus Hat. Uh, and this allows the Pi to be powered with an Ethernet cable. And uh, this is quite incredible, really. Uh, there was a previous product, but this one allows more power. But you can see there's a Pi 4 here. Uh, this is the PoE board. And uh, what it allows you to do is up to 100 meters, now performance might not be as good at 100 meters, but up to 100 meters is the standard for power over ethernet. And uh, if you have a look at the power, uh, it can supply a maximum power of 25.5 watts. So if you need a Pi, uh, but you haven't got power and you haven't got internet in that area, uh, you can get it much further away. Obviously it's a lot uh, of a commercial use for this, but there might be someone who's got uh, say a security camera or something which they want to get much further away uh, Ethernet cables aren't expensive and uh, yeah, this looks pretty impressive another story from the Pi foundation And uh, this was a Wurlitzer jukebox So they've used a 2 gig Raspberry Pi 4 and a Raspberry Pi touch display to form the new brain and face of the Wurlitzer and then Hi-Fi Barry's DAC Plus Pro to play music from a USB stick other devices can play music from an auxiliary import and you can see as I always like to see loads of pictures of the internals and uh, how it's all put together and there is a video if you want to look at that i'll put a link in the description next up was a nice neat raspberry pi 4 case uh, with several fans in it if we scroll down so i wanted to have some fun coming up with a raspberry pi case that's designed to look like a gaming computer i decided to go for the whole desktop look by also designing a case for a nine inch lcd uh, and all the details are in here there's a youtube video as well and if we click through the pictures you can see it looks very neat, nice use of LEDs, little status monitor there as well. And if we go to the YouTube video, you'll see some nice close-ups and various things about the build as shown in here. And some 3D printer shots in here as well. And this is from EE News. Manufacturers are seeing shortages of Raspberry Pi boards, which Evan Upton of the foundation says is more from a boom in demand than chip shortages. And also he said later on in the article, we are getting on better than a lot of people. What's happening this year is there seems to be bottomless demand. It's across the entire demand, all the single board computers and compute modules. So we'll build and sell 10% more than last year. We shipped 7 million boards last year. So next up, Damaso has another RetroPie build. Now, I really like Damaso's builds. I first of all downloaded, I think it's 128 gig one, Nostalgia Trip, and it is really, really good. So if you go to Raspberry Pi 4 images and go to newest first, it should show up at the top. Here we go, so Nostalgia Trip version 3 Ultra. So this is based on Supreme Retro Pi Ultra, so a very good build. And they're just really polished, really good builds. I'm definitely gonna be downloading it and putting it onto probably an SSD. Damaso, always a huge hit here at Arcade Punks. All his images have always proven popular and more so they are loaded and straight to the point. And if we scroll down through, updated version of BOR, Dreamcast with over 100 games, PS1 with 180 games, Sega Saturn 30 games, Sega CD 60 games. So yeah, really, really good. I'll definitely look forward to trying that out. Next up from the PiCast from Tom's Hardware, and uh, it was this bit that got me interested, fastest booting Pi. Uh, and you can see the board that is, he's showing has got an NVMe M.2 drive. I think it's an NVMe one. They do mention NVMe on the uh, crowd supply here um, but uh, yeah so this is a board which has all sorts of features on it but the one i was interested in was the super fast storage there's two different versions of the board and only one of them has the mvme so we can see here from the comparisons pcie m.2 yes and a bit lower down it gives you compatibility for the various different mvme drives that will work with it and we can see here uh, there's a dedicated 3.3 volt 3 amp supply for the drive, which will definitely help. And last up in the news bit, uh, I found this, uh, I was just having a look through YouTube and this was, uh, has only recently come out, but it's a Blender tutorial for a 3D printed case. And uh, I just sort of flicked through it. And what's really nice about it, well, this is um, something to do with a synthesizer that uh, uses a Pi and is 3D printed. 
So it looks, looks very nicely built. But what I found more interesting was the, uh, the use of Blender and just the sort of process of creating the whole thing. Uh, and so it starts off uh, with a cube and obviously getting all the sizes and everything right. You can see here the case is coming along. But I thought it was cool when he imported, oh, and this is making a sort of curved part of the case look, and playing around with it. It looks like a very flexible tool. It's not something I've ever got involved in, but it does look very impressive. Looks like it would take a lot of time for some of these bits. Yeah, this bit I like. So from this bit on, you can download the details of a Raspberry Pi 4 and then import it into it. And so he goes through and imports it in. And here you can see when it's imported in, it comes up as a massive object. A little bit too big, um, but obviously it's all resized and everything like that. But yeah, just just I, I enjoyed looking at the process uh, and it kind of goes all the way through putting the pie inside. I'm not obviously I'm not going to show the video, but I'll put a link in the description so you can see how it all works. But uh, yeah, it was it was interesting to see. There you go. So there's the pie inside the case and it goes on from there. So I mentioned that I'd go back to uh, talking about my CRT monitor and actually it's more about the composite output on the Pi 4. So I didn't realize that the Pi 4 outputs a video signal through the 3.5mm jack. I'm aware that other devices do but I just didn't realize the Pi 4 had it uh, and I guess because I've never looked into it because I didn't really have that much of a desire to use a CRT but uh, the reason that I've done it is because I've worked out a way of getting any audio signal to go through my uh, HomePod speakers and uh, they actually go through the TV but in order to get audio to come through the TV you need to supply a video signal. So something like a turntable doesn't do that and a cassette deck. So what I had to do was generate a video signal and I did that with a Freeview box and that was fine. But I thought it would be nice to be able to get some sort of screen saver on the TV screen or to be able to use it in some different way. And I had a bit of a game getting it to work. So none of these cables worked. So this is a three and a half uh, to three phono, which is from a Samsung TV, a breakout cable. This is a analog three and a half to two phono. And this is a three phono to 3.5 video cable, a Nokia one. Uh, I can't remember what it came with now, but uh, it's worked with other devices. Um, but none of these three worked. And uh, so I spent ages trying to do configuration and as it turns out the Pi bit was super easy to do. I just needed a cable that properly worked. And the one that did work is a Sony video camera cable and this is going into the back of my TV with three phonos. So let's have a look at the config text just to show what you need to change to enable to be able to use a composite output. So as you can see in this picture on the right, uh, some of the old Pis have a composite video output, uh, but I just didn't think the Pi 4 had it. As I say, I just didn't look it up. Uh, but it's enabled by, they disable it by default because it can affect the performance of the Pi. Uh, so it can make it slightly slower. Uh, and the command is this one, enable underscore TV out equals one. But there are also other things, because I, couldn't get it to work. I was getting an image, but it was a really, really bad quality image. I messed about with all sorts of things. So I, I tried this setting, SDTV Disable Color Burst, uh, and it said that the picture will be displayed in monochrome, but it may appear sharper. Didn't work. I tried 4x3 resolution and 16x9. SDTV underscore aspect equals 1 would result in a 4x3 image, and 3 would give you a 16x9 image, so a widescreen image, and I tried all of those. Uh, I also went through these, uh, so the standard, if you just put SDTV mode equals zero, you get NTSC, which is the American standard, uh, or Japanese and American standard, uh, and then I tried two, which is the UK standard, uh, which is ordinary PAL, uh, and I also tried progressive PAL, so I went through all of these options, and because the cables, none of the cables were working, I ended up looking in my loft for another cable, knowing that I had the camcorder cable. I thought the Nokia one was going to work, to be fair, because that's worked with other newer things anyway. Anyway, let's have a look at the uh, boot. So this is the SD card that RetroPie was running on just now, the one that you saw me playing earlier on, and the one you just saw on my, uh, my LCD TV or LED TV. So config.txt, so the three lines that I've added. I also found this one as well, HDMI ignore hot plug. Uh, this one tells it not to use HDMI and you have to make sure that you hash out the HDMI uh, activate or something hot plug. Yeah, HDMI force hot plug. So you need to make sure that that 
is if you've got a hash in something in the config.txt, it means that it's not going to use it. It's there. If you delete the hash, it will enable it. But if you have a hash in front of a line, it means that it's not going to do anything. So these are the settings that I've been using. Uh, and it may be different for you. If you're in a different region, obviously the SDTV mode may be different. If you're in the States, then you need that to be a zero. Uh, enable TV out equals one is the one that tells it to use that three and a half mil socket as a composite video output which is what you often need for a CRT TV. If you can use component, which you can't on the Pi 4, uh, but if you get, well, unless you can do it by the GPIO pins, I may be wrong, um, but component tends to look better, uh, which is the one with the red, green, and blue. Um, but, uh, but yeah, those are the settings I was using. And I was also playing around with, I'll boot into another operating system uh, because I was playing around with screen savers uh, and I hadn't really messed about with screen savers before. I knew some of them had them in, included, but I've played around with it and I've added it to one of my systems. So let's boot into that. Okay, so the bit I installed uh, to do a screen saver, if I go into terminal, so sudo apt install x screen saver. But it came up and there wasn't very many uh, screen savers in there. They weren't very populated. Um, so you'd click on these and, and it would say you had to download it. So I found this uh, on the forums. And in fact, I can probably find the uh, post on the forums. It was this bit here, sudo apt get install x screen saver and so on. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, but basically, once you apply that command, uh, this one here, it downloads all the screen savers. Doesn't take very long. So now if I launch X screen saver, so now you can see uh, I can basically flick through them. So if I go to the top and just click on that, and I can just press the down arrow, and that will show me what it's going to look like. They don't run at the same speed, so you want to do a preview to show how it's going to look. And there's some really cool ones in here, some really weird ones as well. But I thought they might be nice for if you have to have a TV screen on, it might be nice to have some relaxing screensaver running. On my TV, I can turn off the screen, so it doesn't really matter. But if you had an OLED screen, you would want something that would show up uh, so that it's not going to screen burn. But this is really cool. Uh, it's an Apple one, and you can see it looks, looks really, really nice. Proper retro. Yeah, there's these with the... Where is it? There you go. So there's dolphins here. All sorts of things. But you can also set it to uh, go random, random screensaver. And I guess you can check all, I don't know if you can check all of them. It'd be nice if you go, oh, just uh, maybe I won't check all of them. But uh, if I, so cycle after. So every one minute they'll change. How long before the screensaver activates? So I'm gonna get it to come in at one minute, so it will come in really soon. So I've had to disable the config.txt things on this um, because I wouldn't be able to get it to boot if I had it, well, I'd have to use it on a composite screen, which isn't gonna be very nice for using an operating system. So let's just change those settings back so sudo nano boot config.txt. So rather than put it into another system, I'll just do it on this. Uh, so it's really the enable TV out, I think is the only one I definitely need. Uh, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with SDTV mode equals two, which is the one that uh, gives it PAL, which is the UK system. I'm not gonna do the color burst. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to do the uh, SDTV aspect because I think it probably defaults to 16 by 9 anyway because this is on a 16 by 9 monitor and it's filling the screen. So let's uh, control X and yes and enter. And then I just need to shut that down. And I'm going to reboot in my Pi plugged into my, I'm not going to use my CRT TV, I'm going to use my LED TV. Okay, so here's one of the screensavers running. So you can see my setup. I've got my Pi using the composite output cable. That's going into the back of the TV. My previous video, which was explaining about how you can get any source to play through the HomePod speakers, will kind of make this more clear. But this also can apply if you've got an ordinary soundbar, which is connected by HDMI arc or optical, uh, you can still use your TV to be able to basically plug something like a record deck or a tape deck into your TV, which you can't plug into modern soundbars because they only have digital connections, but then the TV will pass that sound 
uh, in decent quality to your soundbar, or in my case, my home pods. This is a bit of a weird screensaver. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.